Welcome to the Catholic Forge, a conversational podcast where we gather to explore our Catholic faith and discuss how it forms our lives. All are welcome to join in this conversation and journey. Thank you for listening. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. This is Eric in West Virginia. This is Ben in Kentucky. This is John in Illinois, the first state to ratify the 13th Amendment. What is that? Do you guys know? I have no idea. Uh, Come on. <laughs> 13. First viewer that texts it in, we'll get, it, we'll get a prize. What is the 13th Amendment? The 13th Amendment was abolishing slavery. Uh, yeah. To Library of Congress. The 13th Amendment. <laughs> Your viewer voted in too late. Of course, Lincoln, we should have known. Siri, uh, or whoever whoever it is on the Google device, uh, she confirmed, John. Oh my gosh, Lincoln, of course. Well, always an adventure with the Catholic Forge as we get started here. On this episode, gentlemen, welcome to Lent. Here we are. Um, having gone through at least an advent together as a little podcast community, and here we are in Lent, and golly, just so much to talk about, so much to consider for these 40 days of fasting and prayer, contemplation before Easter, Uh, but kind of aiming in the direction of Lent as a family and Lent as a gentleman or a Catholic gentleman, and so I'd like to begin with the most obvious question, and that's the question that everyone always asks. What are you giving up for Lent? Now, I know (laughs) that not everyone is comfortable answering this question, and probably for good reason. What do you think? About why people are uncomfortable? Why they would not want to answer this question. (laughs) Because they're not really giving anything up, and they don't want anybody to know about it. That's the reason I don't want to talk about it. (laughs) enough okay okay uh you know i think there's always the the feeling of worrying about if you you don't want to show off you don't want to talk about it you know in a way that makes people makes it look like you're you're trying to seem to be holy or or highlight yourself i I think i think that's a big part of it that idea of not wanting to come off as though look how holy i am or but i think for me though there's a very personal thing about it it's um it's a very intimate activity that I'm doing with God, and I just, I don't talk about kissing my wife, but I do that, but I, I don't talk <laughs> sure. about it, you know, and so sure. it, it's just the kind of, there's a, it's a special, unique thing with me and God, and so, so there's some sensitivity there, but also when you read in Scripture, too, you know, Jesus says, says you know, when you do your, get your giving, you know, do it so the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing, and right. yeah. when you're fasting, don't let your hair get all messy. Wash your face, you know, like the hypocrites do, so no one will know that you're fasting. So we, we get some of that message from Scripture that we're not to be out there like, look at me, look what I'm doing. I think that yeah. that's a pretty sound thing. Absolutely. It's, it's amazing, this kind of cultural life that Lent, especially Ash Wednesday, has taken on. And certainly, I don't know about either of you when you went to Mass, if you did, on Ash Wednesday. But uh, here at, at my parish, um, we were packed, and we, we had a service, not a Mass, at the local Newman Center, and uh, ecumenical. And, man, it was full. It's just amazing that people come out of the woodwork for this particular solemnity, even though, at least for what it's worth for Catholics, it's not a day of holy obligation. Uh, you know, you don't have to be there. Uh, and even people who are not Catholic will come to receive, uh, receive ashes on their forehead and to hear those words yeah. again, repent and believe the gospel, or remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. It's just, I, I, I'm always amazed. I don't know why I keep being amazed. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it so many times. It's just always amazing. And then we hear people who maybe have no real relation or association to the church talking about what they're giving up for Lent, uh, which I think is also just, <laughs> it's just wild. Yeah, it, it is really wild because they, you know, you've got people that will skip Sunday Mass, which is a day of celebration, but make it a point to come and be told that you're a sinner <laughs> and that you need to repent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why yeah. would you want to show up for that? 
it's it's a beautiful thing though that it's it's something that's part of our our cultural tradition as Catholics and Christians that we we have this desire that we know that that's there and I'm I'm very pleased to see that because I often feel like we live in a world that very much is trying to expunge a Christian culture and so when we see those people it's just a beautiful thing that we that there is that culture still within them and that, that yearning. So I, I find that very exciting. It is, it is amazing to me too, though, that so many people do come for it. Yeah. Um, I, I, just a, a kind of a quick question, and we don't need to get into the deep structure of it, but when you went to Ash Wednesday, did they impose ashes on kids? Yeah, to- yes. Definitely. Definitely really? for me. <laughs> we, we went to the, the morning service, and it was – predominantly the school kids that were there sure. that had well, walked, sure. walked over from the school. So yeah, most definitely all the kids. Yeah. My baby got them. Well, she's not a baby. She's two, but you know, interesting. Interesting. Well, what, what do you got for us on that, Eric? You sound, uh, well, no, uh, uh, at none of the masses or services I went to, um, were, were children, uh, ashed. <laughs> 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 and, and, uh, after the, the Newman center, after that ecumenical service, I was talking with, um, with with a priest about it, and, and Father and I were discussing, you know, why is it that you would, and why wouldn't you, and and so certainly, I mean, this is this is kind of churchy, but uh, obviously, you know, that the ashes are a reminder of sin. But if you are a little baby, then in mm-hmm. the church's eyes, even though we as parents know. You are definitely sinful. Yeah, my my two year old definitely <laughs> he knows what she's doing. But in the in the church's eyes, you know, they're still in that age of innocence, and so, um, and so, I mean, you, you of course, we, we, with with a little humor, you know. Well, that, yeah. you know, I I think you could add something to that dialogue too, though. It's true. My two year old is probably not culpable for any bad things that she's done, um, and she'd delight in that. But um, <laughs> but it, she still is part of a fallen human race, affected and afflicted. Right by mm-hmm. sin. And so into that, she she still is under that, as part of the fallen human race, we're subject to death, you know? Course, and so, so, right. so, so there still is, and, and my kids, they love it. You know, my, my son, <laughs> my, my oldest, he's a second grader, so he's in first communion classes right now, and he cannot wait mm-hmm. to go to um, mm-hmm. communion. Yeah. But this was really cool because it was just a little, he, he's going to be going to communion in, in, um, in the end of April, and it was really cool for him to be able to go up and actually participate. And then, of course, for yeah. my daughter and for the other kids yeah. to go up, they were yeah. so proud of their ashes that they were able to participate. And and I think that's one of the reasons we see those people coming back, even though they may not go to Mass on Sunday, coming back on Ash Wednesday, because there's that that's something very unique. I remember this as a child going up and getting those ashes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Incidentally, Evie refused to get ashes. I think she was the only kid in the church. <laughs> <laughs> that did not she did she not want like to do it <laughs> no i don't okay, know fair enough she's shy in a lot of ways i think that might have just been it of you know the it being different out of the routine and everything but the priest joked with her that she was not being an ambassador of christ <laughs> she just smirked oh, no. she <laughs> smirked and hid behind me oh that's funny uh yeah, uh, neither of our kids did. I mean, and no big deal. I'm, I'm not certainly trying to tr- trying to play devil's advocate or anything. I was just curious. I know that um, in different diocese, you know, there are policies that the, the bishop has said, you may or you may not, or it's left up to the priest, and then, you know, he may decide yes or no. Just kind of curious because we're all kind of spread out. Second question. Oh, Ben, please. Yeah, real yes. quick. So what you were talking about there is kind of like the age of reason thing. Like if you're below the age of seven, what do you really need to to repent for if you're not even fully cognizant of your right. your sin is okay. Right. I just wanted to yeah. make sure I'm with you. Yes. Okay. The second question, I'm not going to ask you what you're fasting because that is between you and God. And like John said, it, it is your own personal gift to God that no one else ever has to know about. And that's, that's devotion, <laughs> the, the interior gift. But I'm curious, is there anything that you thought of approaching Lent and you totally knew that you could have given it up, but definitely did not <laughs> because you didn't want to. Oh yeah. You know, my son, um, Michael, he said that on, on Ash Wednesday, he woke up and he said for Ash day, I'm giving up pants. <laughs> <laughs> So it made me think about it. I did think about Ash giving day. up pants for all of Lent, but uh, no. But my son, he truly wanted to give up pants for Ash Day, is what he called it, and then for Lent. So <laughs> <laughs> sun is very cold outside. You can wear shorts if you yeah. want, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. No, I will. I will say that this year, 
you know, years past, I've, a lot of years I've given up, uh, I like wine a lot. I like, and I like a hot drink in the morning, like coffee or tea. Sure. So kind of like my morning, my morning comfort drink and my evening comfort drink. And in years past, I've given yeah. those up. Okay. And I thought about it this year and then I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do that this year. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm, I'm going to keep them both. And, and I, w- so I will say this year I leaned, I, I fell more on the, what spiritual practices can I add to my yeah, life yeah, versus sure. versus what can I take away? Because I don't know where I am in my life right right now this year. I just felt that would do more for my spiritual life than than taking something else away, you know? Sure, sure. Yeah. John? There, there were. I, I don't know that there's anything that I, I, I thought I should give up and they didn't. But I wasn't firm this year. There were a couple of things that I wanted to give up that that I, I you know, I'm like I should give these up this year. It wasn't really till after about the second day of Lent that I was like, "Yep, it's official." You know, like I couldn't quite commit to it. <laughs> sure, I was kind of sure. weak in the knees. It's like, well, maybe, maybe. And then it was like the second day. I was like, "Nope, I, I need to do this." You know, because um, I was yeah. struggling. You know, Ash Wednesday is always a day where we're good. And then yeah. the next day, I'm like, "Oh, well, maybe I could go back to TV and some stuff." And and then I was like, "Nope, I need to stick with it." So mm-hmm. yeah, I was weak in the knees, but. Uh, Nothing that I, I yeah. felt I should give up and then didn't. For for me, it's it was three things, and it's like always the same three things. Of course, uh, 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 video games, um, which is a million percent doable. <laughs> uh, uh, coffee um, and, uh, and and smoking and cigarettes. Well, but I was just smoking in general because you know I. That's find why I, your voice sounds so so clear <laughs> and, and luxurious today. I was wondering. Uh, no, no. The the point is, is that I did not give up any of these things. Um, because... <laughs> That's why your voice sounds so wretched. <laughs> there it is. There it is. I hear the co- smoker right now. <laughs> yeah. People are gonna yeah. think. People are gonna think okay. that's a sound effect. Nope, maybe. Oh, you said you got those go weren't sound away. effects. It was really him trying to breathe. <laughs> I think you need to go. I think you have another awards dinner to go on to Sears Tower tonight. You just, you don't, don't be late. Yeah, yeah. Traffic's bad. But uh, um, all of these things, I was thinking, just totally possible, totally doable, not even necessarily like difficult. I mean, you know, there would be, you'd miss them and cessation or whatever. But, but really, all of these things, I was like these would be like noteworthy things that would challenge me at my, at my core level because mm. I enjoy them all so much. And then I turned them all away and like immediately <laughs> I, I felt the spirit check me and I was like, mm, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just stubborn and I'm, I'm sorry, Lord. I, I yeah. still love you. I just, I, I went a different I'm just direction. not going to do anything for you. I just, <laughs> I'm trying to, <laughs> I love you, but I really don't want to show it. Just, just I, take my word, God. I just take it. I love you, and I don't want to feed your sheep. I don't know why you keep asking me. <laughs> uh, one thing, though, and this is something that has recently, even over the last year or so, been an affliction to me, is the the international global plight of the cell phone. And I'm Mm. becoming really genuinely in my DNA uncomfortable with how much time I'm giving it every day, Mm -hmm. with how much I look at it and how I'm always looking over to see if there's a little flashing light or whatever. And I'm just sick of it. There where your treasure is, your heart will also be. I'm I'm just sick of it. And, um, And so, of course, I mean, how without the cell phone, how can I text John about, you know, skinning wildlife? Uh, or, or you know, or whatever it is, and 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 so I'm not saying that like I want to go totally off the grid like Ben and you know have my kids fetch water from the well. It's not like that, but I, I just was thinking like how can I really step away from the dominion that this device has over me? And I'm look and, and not to compare myself to others. I'm looking around. And I'm like looking at these people, and they're just it's always in their hand, and they're what's happening in, in our time. And, uh, and so I don't have an answer and I'm, it's not really like a fast. I'm just really using Lent as a time to be super duper intentional about that. If I'm talking with someone in any way, don't put, get that thing out, put it away. You know, if you're, if you're in, in a meeting or you're speaking with someone, just get rid of it. I'm not perfect. I'm working on it. But anyway, so that's, no, that's, that's just a pondering. That's a really worthy goal. I think the yeah. world would be a much better place if everybody took that attitude and, uh, yeah. 
it's it's funny you bring that up because we just for our, our family faith formation program we made technology boxes and we had the families sign little pledge cards that at dinner time they have a little box that sits on their table that at dinner time they put their technology in the box and so yeah. they can have a, a, a technology free dinner because yeah. it, it's epidemic with families um mm -hmm. not being able mm -hmm. to sit down and yeah. talk and let's book let's bookmark that and not forget about it i think that's a good episode in itself the yeah for sure digging into why that is why we've gotten to that point with cell phones but yeah yeah you know I, lent i i often feel like i'm kind of annoyed by lent you know christmas will have just come and gone and it's like oh here comes another time I have to give up chocolate and stuff like that. <laughs> I genuinely got to say I was I was excited about the beginning of Lent this year. I feel like I've really had the pull of, you know, like TV and um, I, I listen to the, the radio a lot and news a lot and I really enjoy the news. And it just, it's one of those things that I've been battling with. You know, I feel like, and I think we've talked about this before. It's one of those things that I really feel that I'm battling with is being a father, being like, I need to be present to my kids yeah. and, and turn this off. And I was excited because this was the opportunity that I needed to go. It's official. It wasn't mm, just like, I yeah. should do it. It's like, mm. now it's an imperative. So I was really kind of excited about Lent this year. And of course, that's really what Lent is about, you know, and that's really our goal, you know, is to use it to to, to die to self, you know, yeah. to have that opportunity. I, I love the ta adding on things. Um, yeah. As long as you don't avoid the giving up things. It's right. so right. Right. it's so important, especially as men. We're talking about this, especially from a Catholic man's point of view. Fasting is probably the mo one of the besides mass and confession. They are probably one of the most powerful things that you can do as a man to stay faithful. In fact, it almost fasting almost made my top 10 spiritual resource list mm. because in fasting, even if it's chocolate or TV or cigarettes or video games or any of the things that Eric didn't give up that he should have, um, <laughs> anytime that we give, say no, even to those small things, we're training ourselves to be able, when I see that beautiful woman, I already learned how to say no to myself mm. when, when, we, when, we, uh, when I want to be impatient with my kids. So it's just so important, especially in chastity, for men to practice fasting because it, it, it empowers you to say no to self. And that's just yeah. so important And because, I mean, as, as a man— you know, I, I'm always attracted to women. And so it's, it's, it's it, 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 it is, uh, my name is John and I'm an addict. Um, you, you know, and uh, man, Eric, what a weirdo, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, I find it so such a wonderful practice fasting. In fact, um, I, I, I when I was in high school, um, I, we were very much, as I, as I said before, into the, the messages from Mary and Mary very often, the blessed mother, um, often called for fasting. And so we would often fast on Wednesdays and Fridays when I was in high school. And I made it through high school as a virgin because of that fasting, not because it made me weird, but because it gave me the ability to say no to myself, yeah. Yeah. you know? And so and if you, if you had seen that long hair he had during high school, it was hard to keep the women away. I, I was, <laughs> We're talking about a sheer gravimetric magnetism. Okay. So powerful, <laughs> powerful. So, uh, you know, praise God that john yes yeah <laughs> yeah so it's just such a such a powerful a powerful tool for men who maybe struggle a little more with chastity and maybe selfishness or the things we struggle with yeah. fasting is is just like testosterone or steroids for the soul yeah mm -hmm. I'm, I'm always interested too fasting how it brings out the uniqueness of people because you know something that i could give up easily could be pure hell for someone else to give up and vice yeah. versa, you know? Oh, sure. And, yeah. and honestly, and not to, not to toot my own horn here, but why I took a little bit of a different approach this year, I've still got a few things I'm giving up, but I found that I'm pretty good. I guess I'm pretty disciplined at giving things up and, and like reprogramming myself. Hmm. And, and in past years, you know, even as much as I, I mean, I love wine, I love coffee, but I get past that first week and it's almost like it's easy. It's like, okay, I'm in, mm -hmm. I'm in the new routine now. This isn't a big deal. And it's so I just, I don't feel the pull anymore. I don't feel the sacrifice anymore. And that's why this year I was like, you know, maybe it would, maybe it would hit me harder adding. And I'm finding that it totally does. It, it's much harder for me to make that extra time to add something in. Um, 
But with that being said, I had to give up a few things to create that extra time. So it's kind of a balance, sure. you know, of the sure, of sure. the fasting and the the adding. But and so added into all of this is is the family dynamic. Uh, and so we heard a bit about you know wanting to give up pants and John having <laughs> to uh, <laughs> to guide the young mind. Uh, what other kind of family devotions besides the obligatory fish fry on Fridays? Uh, what, what other kind of devotions? or activities uh, uh, can exist here, you know, for in Lent for families. Or and you can tell you do. us about a really awesome one that you guys do. Yeah, we started, I guess this is only really our second second or third year doing it. Alice got the idea, I think, from a, a Catholic blogger that she follows of okay. just lighting a single candle, Ki- kind of the idea like the Advent wreath during Advent, only this is just a, a Lenten wreath. It's a single candle, and then it's a really bare, uh, sparse, kind of like almost like the crown of thorns minus the thorns. It's like a twisted kind of wooden looking wreath just sitting sure. sitting around that can- candle. Hmm. So we light that every night at the beginning of dinner and uh, and recite the Anima Christi that just as a kind of a special, and you know, that's the prayer that we picked. You pick any prayer just as a way of kind of sharing with the kids and ourselves, reminding that this is Lent, this is a special time, uh, and, you know, adding that extra devotion to it. Yeah, sure. We we observe a little more somberness in the house, um, you know, so, like, all electronics are off. We don't watch TV. Um, you know, we don't really do much of the video game thing, um, but, it, you know, we, we kind of we tone those things down. And then we really focus on, like, at dinner time, making precise, like we sit down often, I'll be sitting, we'll be saying grace and I'll be getting the last, you know, chicken nuggets on the plate and the kids are sitting down and, and, and we're like, nope, everyone's going to wait until we are all seated, you know, so just being more conscious hmm. um, about what we're doing there. And then, and then the candy, the kids are always like, can I have a piece of candy or can I have this? And then, so there's just a reminder, nope, it's, it's Lent, we're waiting. And in the first day, they're like, ah, and after a while, like even Michael, the four-year-old will be like, He'll say, can I have a piece of candy? And I'll say, well, we're not having candy now. And he says, it's Lent. You know, so he, he's got it. It's Lent. It's, it's Lent. You know, and he'll even sometimes come up and ask now, That's Daddy, so can I have funny. a piece of candy? And I'll go, no, I probably shouldn't. It's Lent. So, oh, so sweet. you know, Good those little you. kind of things um, are, are really uh, enduring. So it, hmm. I love the no TV thing. We that's a tradition in our house too, which I hadn't yeah. really I hadn't really thought of it the way you just put it until you said that. But I guess the first year we did it, it's like that was our goal. We gave up TV for Lent, but now it's just a tradition. Like we don't watch TV during Lent, and it's yeah. it's not really the thing that we're giving up. It's just part of the atmosphere, and it's it really that creates that extra time, you know, if, if for extra prayer or extra devotions, you know. When you lose the TV at night, you gain a whole lot of extra time. Yeah, I knew a family that uh, during Lent, they actually would uh, be quiet in the house. Like they always talked in little lower voices and they, they, there were no music or anything. And then on Easter, they would all dress up in Hawaiian shirts and play Calypso music <laughs> <laughs> and, and dance awesome. around. And they would make lots of noise and stuff so that the kids had that. So for 40 days, they would always just kind of talk in hushed mm-hmm. voices. And I, I, it's not something we've ever tried, but I always thought what an admirable thing that was to to your whole day making it into this observance. Yeah. of. And they were a homeschool family, too. So that's a lot of time at home being yeah, yeah being hushed oh yeah i I think that's a beautiful meditation and something something that i've been thinking of you know with like music and and the other day hannah was running around and she was singing some gospel acclamation you know alleluia alleluia and i poked my head out of the kitchen the very same way i shut down that it's a wonderful life nonsense Mm. you know during during advent and i said hey knock that off jesus is in the (laughs) he's in the tomb stop singing that (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or whatever I said, and, but uh, but that that whole idea, and I remember actually a friend, um, John at the parish there, uh, telling me that that when they were younger, that was kind of how they maintained, like on Good Friday especially, you know, there was no music, uh, you didn't play outside, you know, you you could play inside but quietly, and that that their parents just wanted to maintain this this very somber, beautiful atmosphere, and and for me, I think that that one of the goals could be at least trying to really maintain that sense of this is different than what is to come and that 
the uh, Easter is, of course, the end of Lent, but that doesn't mean that like the Lenten spirit suddenly dissipates. I think that that's something that I was pondering there, John, when you were talking is like that sense of, oh, Easter morning, finally, the fast is over. <laughs> <laughs> and and Ben crawls out of bed toward the the jar of Ghirardelli chocolate chips on the t- the table. I've, I remember when we were. I have never we given were, them up. Oh, my man, come on. <laughs> He's waiting to be severely addicted to give them up. He wants it to be a struggle. Yeah, it's a it's a narrow gate. Uh, you know, it's uh, important that you form a new addiction each year so that you have you've got something to work on during Lent. Um, we, when we were in college, a, a bunch of uh, the fellas and I we gave up smoking, and you can bet. At the strike of midnight, we were outside. <laughs> we were outside, and we were playing Easter music and smoking. Oh my gosh! But but that sense that that not only uh, I mean so, yes, yeah, very worldly, but but that that the spirit of Lent goes on, discipline, pondering, meditation in the light of Easter morning, in the light of the resurrection. How wonderful! Uh, and and uh, certainly, I, I, don't, I don't mind. I'm, I'm going to speak for Ben a little bit, but uh, I appreciated just speaking of things that were like adding in. I appreciated John uh, sending us a little book. Uh, I'm yeah. not going to send you anything back, but I appreciate that. Thank you. So it was very nice. Yeah, I don't know if you saw my email, but I. I yes, uh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I guess for people listening, we should mention that it's a like a Lenten devotional. Uh, what's the title of it? I don't have it nearby. I forgot. Becoming a man after God's own heart. Yeah. Is that right? Something yeah. like that, John, I think it was. Okay. That, no, that's it. It's got some really great <laughs> stuff in it. Yeah, it's beautiful. And oh, I'm not going to say it. I just don't want to get into it because we actually could actually finish the episode under 30 minutes. So let's not jinx it. Yeah. And open, well, and, I actually and, and thought of this another... really long scripture passage that we should read about Lent because it's important that we understand. Let us, let us, yeah, let, let us recite Psalm one nineteen antiphonally. No, no. Let me throw uh, in a quick uh, uh, comment though before we, before you wrap it up. Yep. Because we've talked about not sharing what you gave up for Lent, I, we don't want to leave anybody feeling bad who has shared with somebody what they gave up for Lent because it's obviously very open to, you know, know yourself, know your motivations. If you're moaning around the water cooler at work about how hard it's been on you that you go, that's the wrong type of sharing. If you're talking to a close friend, especially for accountability, like maybe what you gave up, it's really hard for you to stick to it and you need some accountability and some extra support. And, you know, by all means, share with people. I mean, know the situation. You know, that's that's basically what I wanted to throw in is that don't feel like you're a horrible, horrible person automatically. If you've like, oh, no, I've already told somebody what I gave up for land. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and and your sharing could encourage them. You know, it's not, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. and often, often what you're doing, often what you're doing will inspire somebody else or or, or give them courage. You know, I, you know, Eric, I know Eric, but I won't mention his name. Uh, you know, for for years, often gave up all meat for all of Lent, and you know, when we did the uh, Seder meal, it was a big thing. We we were doing this amazing meal, and he he wouldn't participate in the meat. And what an amazing fast mm. that was for a man that eats nothing but bacon. So um, <laughs> it really was very inspirational to see that. And so, so we, yeah, in sharing those things, I'm often inspired. I mean, we had a teen one year who was addicted to ketchup, ate ketchup on her cereal. I kid oh, you not. Man. And oh my God. she gave up ketchup for Lent. And then the next year, she, she gave up the second thing she was most addicted to, which was ranch dressing. And oh she put this gosh. on everything. And I was just so amazed by the, yeah. not, I'm just going to give up, you know, something small. They gave up something <laughs> really was um, a big part of their life. Final so word. I, I enjoy. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, please. <laughs> I was impressed. That's all. Oh, I enjoy bacon and eggs. Thank you. And this. <laughs> Has been the Catholic Forge. We we let let us just say we made it under thirty minutes for the uh, show proper, and now yeah. we get into the fair <laughs> enough. The, the end. You got things. fifteen We're... seconds. Get rolling, boy. <laughs> God bless you. Good night. Ten. Yes, a very happy Lent to all of you. We thank you for listening, and we'd like to close, as always, with a prayer and a blessing. May God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit bless you, guard you, and lead you to eternal life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you for listening to The Catholic Forge. We hope you've enjoyed this episode and will leave us a positive rating and review on iTunes, SoundCloud, or YouTube. Subscribe and share with those who you think would enjoy our podcast, please. And continue the conversation with us on Facebook and Twitter. To get a hold of us, you can reach us at thecatholicforge at gmail.com. For more information regarding the podcast, visit our website, www.thecatholicforge.com. And we especially thank our faithful wives for their continued support of this podcast. And we thank you very much for listening. We think of you very much. <laughs> Mario, <laughs> Luigi. <laughs> it's a me. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I'm going to leave that in. I'm going to leave that in. <laughs> <laughs>